Backing up your files through version control is extremely important when developing games. This will allow you to have a backup on the cloud, create commits you can roll back to when something goes wrong, and to collaborate with other developers in your team. So far, version control for games has been quite problematic since common solutions like Git are not well suited for handling large binary data such as textures, 3D models, and U asset files. And the free tier for GitHub and GitLab have strong limitations on the repository size or the amount of members in your team. In AAA development, Perforce is often used, however, it's not very accessible to individuals and small teams. The brand new version control system I want to show you today is called Diversion, and it solves all of those issues and offers a bunch of cool features on top of that. The free tier gives you a generous 100GB of included storage, up to 10 team members and 10 repositories. Some of the developers on the Diversion team are actually viewers of my channel and invited me to the early beta version a couple of months ago. Even back then I already felt like Diversion was superior to the other options and liked it so much I offered to create this tutorial. And they were nice enough to sponsor this video so this tutorial is brought to you by Diversion. You can check out their version control system from the link in the description and make use of the generous free tier. There you can also find a link to their Discord where they can help you if you run into any problems using their version. Now let's get into an actual example of how easy it is to set this up for version control. This will work similarly regardless of if you're using Unity, Godot or Unreal Engine, but I'll use Unreal for demonstration. First we go to diversion.dev and click on get started. Here we can simply use a Google account to log in or create a new account with an email address. After that you get this welcome screen which allows you to create a new repository, but we can just skip this for now and download the Diversion desktop client. Depending on what operating system you're on, the install process is slightly different, but I guess most of you are going to be on Windows, so we can download the Windows installer. Once it's downloaded, we can just double click the executable file. Click on next, read through the license agreement and click on agree. Decide if you want to have it in the start menu or not, and then click on install. This will install their command line interface and their desktop app as well. After the installation is finished, the desktop client will open up and you'll have to log in again with your credentials. Now we want to create a new repository. And if you're new to version control, a repository is basically just our tracked folder with our entire history. Click here on new repository on the right and we have two options available. We can just create a new repository in a new folder, can just put in a name and select where we want to save it. But I believe create from an existing folder is actually more streamlined when it comes to making games. We can create a new project in Unity, Unreal or Godot and then just put Diversion into that existing folder. To do that I'll just create a new third person project from Unreal Engine to use for the demonstration. And I'm just going to call Diversion Test and Create. Now that we have a project we can go back to the Diversion desktop app. Now we can just select it from Create from Existing Folder. And wait for it to initialize the repository. You can see that it is currently syncing and it is already uploading the files to the cloud. To view the repository we can just click on view repo at the bottom here. And it already created a workspace and a branch automatically for us. The workspace is basically what we locally have on our PC but it will also be synced to the cloud and this is something special with Diversion which opens up a lot of doors for new functionality. The branch is something everybody in your team will be able to access and you can create multiple branches. But for now we just need to have one of each and it already created these for us. You can see by creating a new repository it already made an initial commit for us and we can click on history to see what happened here. The initial commit only created a dvignore file and this is the counterpart to the git ignore file which we need to specify which files we don't want to upload and track. This already comes predefined for Godot, Unity and Unreal Engine and it already knows like which are temporary files that you really don't need to track. And this makes it very easy to get started because you don't have to set this up by yourself. Now we can go back to workspace and we want to commit all of the files for the project as well. We can simply click here to select all of the paths and we want to upload all of this data and track it. And for the commit message we can just uh, type create third person template and click on commit. Now since the workspace is already synced to the cloud, committing is extremely fast and it's over in a couple of seconds. And now we can click on history and you can see that our commit is already here. It is available for everybody else that is working on our same branch. And as you can see, since we have the dvignore file, we only uploaded all of the necessary files. There's no temporary files, there's no saved folder and we only have the stuff we really need. Now that the repository is set up, we can just start working on our game. For example, in the third person character, I'm just going to make a change that we can track. 
So just in the beginning after begin play, at the end, I'm just gonna put a print string to demonstrate. And just say start it. Compile and save. And now if we open up diversion again, we can see that there is a one path modified. And here we see the entire folder structure, but if you're familiar with the GitHub desktop, this change list view is actually more similar to that. And you can see all of the files that change. And we want to apply this to the commit so we can just check it, make sure it's active and just say add print string and commit it. And again, commit, it's gonna be super fast because it's already synced to the cloud. And in the history, it is now showing up the add print string. And something that happens a lot in game development is that you make mistakes and you have to go back on them. So I'm just gonna delete a couple of things here and make sure to save all. And I now want to save this new stage. So back in diversion, I can just uh, select all of the paths and just modify stage. And commit this. And now the next day when I start the game, I notice that something is broken and I wanna go back to the last commit, the last checkpoint. Since a recent update, we can also do reverts from the desktop app, but I want to take this opportunity to show you how the command line interface works and do it that way. In the projects folder, we can just right click and on Windows open in terminal. If you're on Mac or Linux, it's probably gonna be a different prompt. And here I can just type dv to open up the diversion shell. And as opposed to git, it actually gives you the commands at the bottom. You can use the arrow keys to navigate here and it gives you all of the possible commands you can use. So you're not just like on your own. And what we are looking for is we want to look for revert here. So you can see revert the changes made in a commit. So after I select revert, I can just press on space and it shows me all of the different commits that I have. And I want to go back on the modify stage. So I want to revert the DV commit for, but one important thing is that we actually want to shut down Unreal Engine before we revert something because otherwise it's gonna lock the files. So Unreal Engine just click on the X and shut down the project. And now I can hit enter. And after a couple of seconds, the revert was completed successfully. Now, when we open up the Unreal Engine project again, we can see that the last changes we made got rolled back and we fixed our mistakes. Right here, the stage is back up. I can play again and everything is working fine. And now you can just continue working on your game. You know that if you make a mistake, you can go back to the previous state, but most likely you're not gonna work on your project alone and you want to invite some other members. So let's also check that out. To do that, click on the home button and here on the Divergent Test Repository, click on the cogwheel icon. And here you can just type in the email address of the members you want to invite. We can also specify if they can read, write, or are an admin. And in general, you just wanna say can write for contributors and click on send invite. On my other PC, I can click on clone repo to download the data. Now on my desktop PC, I just made a couple of adjustments to the level design. And back on my laptop, it automatically downloaded this change without me having to click on pull like you have to do in GitHub desktop. This will always work automatically unless there are merge conflicts. And now if I open the project again, I have the changes applied, which my other team member, in this case, my desktop PC made in the last commit. Something that can often be a big problem with game development though are merge conflicts. For example, if two people at the same time update the same C++ file, we might be able to merge it without any conflicts. However, binary data like blueprints cannot easily be merged. So we are not allowed to update the same blueprint on two different PCs at the same time. And Diversion has a nice feature to prevent merge conflicts before they even happen. Now on my desktop PC, I make some simple changes to the third person character blueprint. And I'm not gonna commit those changes yet. They are only in my local workspace and sync to my workspace in the cloud, but not on the main branch yet. And even then back on my laptop, Diversion will know that somebody else changed this file. So I can just go here to content and look for this file, third person, blueprints, and you can see this purple warning. It's telling me that somebody else is working on this file currently and made changes to it that are not committed yet. If you click on it, it's actually gonna give you some more information on who is working on it. So to prevent merge conflicts before they even happen, you could then talk to your team member and figure out who is supposed to work on what, and you might work on a different task until they're done and committed their changes. Diversion also has a free Unreal Engine plugin that is currently in beta. Using a version control plugin directly inside of Unreal Engine comes with some benefits such as a detailed overview of blueprint changes and doing commits without having to leave Unreal. To install it, just go to the Unreal Engine Marketplace and look for Diversion. Then click on free to add it to your account. 
After that, click on Install to Engine and select whichever Unreal Engine version you plan on using. In my case, it's 5.4. Now, if we open up the third-person project we created before, we can click on Edit, go to Plugins, and here also look for Diversion. Click on the check mark to activate it, and then restart the project. To activate it, there is one more step. On the bottom right, we can click on Revision Control. Then click on Connect to Revision Control. And here we can select the provider. In our case, we want to select Diversion. And now it should show the repository and where your data is saved. And then just click on Accept Settings. And this is all we have to do to connect to an existing Diversion repo. To demonstrate how this works, we can just create a new blueprint. So here I'm just going to right click, create a new blueprint class, and I just want to make a simple door. So click on actor and call it BP underscore door. And you can see that the revision control is working and we see this question mark. And the question mark is because now this actor only exists in memory, but not on the hard drive yet. So the version doesn't know about it yet. Once we save all though, you can see that it is now updated and it is scheduled for addition. To create a commit, we can just click on revision control and submit content. And this is exactly the same thing we did before in the desktop app. And again, we want to give it a simple description, just create door blueprint and submit. And this way you can save your changes without having to leave Unreal Engine. Back in the desktop app, you can confirm that this commit worked out correctly. To show the blueprint changes, let's update the door even more. So we can open up the door by double clicking and I want to add a cube in here. Add a cube and I want to scale it up so I can just go to the Z axis and scale it up to make it look more like a door. And I also want to add some blueprint changes. So go to the event graph and on begin play, let's just add a print string, something very simple and just say door is active. And make sure to compile and save all. In the content drawer, you can now see that there is a check mark that tells us the item has been modified. So this is not a new item, it is an item that already existed in the version control and we modified it. We can now go to revision control and again, click on submit content and we can double click the door to get some more information on what changed since the last commit. This window shows us the difference between the blueprint the way it was before and the way it is now. So we can actually play through these steps and you can see that we added the variable cube. You can see that we created the cube. You can see that we created the print string. And this way you can just look through your blueprints and make sure that you didn't unnecessarily add anything and you didn't make any mistakes before you actually committed to version control. Everything looks fine here though. So again, I can just update door and submit this. One more cool feature of Diversion I want to talk about for a second is the ability to import Git repositories. You can choose between only importing the latest commit or you can also import all branches with the history and this allows you to enable continuous bidirectional syncing. So if you just want to give Diversion a try but aren't quite ready to make the switch yet, you can just import a Git repository and if you make changes in Diversion, it's also going to be affected on Git. If you make changes in Git, it's also going to be affected on Diversion. So we can try it out first without any commitment. And that's it for this tutorial. As always, huge thanks to my patrons. 